But now most of us have heard about the face on Mars and repeated accusations that NASA has been covering up the truth. Four years ago, when NASA announced the discovery of life in a Martian meteorite, I was quoted in the press as saying that the earth-shaking announcement was a government test balloon to gradually prepare the public for a bigger bombshell. I also said that the announcement was part of a time release program to give us all the news and stages. The release of 65,000 photographs from NASA's Mars Global Surveyor has now put us on the fast track to discovery about a past intelligent civilization on the Red Planet. This is NASA's uncover up, if you will. And the space agency, and I haven't said this in the past, but I'll say it now, is to be congratulated for finally making these photographs available to the general public. Today's press conference is truly historic. Tom Van Flandern, Brian O'Leary, and scores of scientists the world over have been eagerly poring over these pictures and discovering remarkable things. Strap yourself in. We're about to see compelling proof of artificial structures on Mars that could have profound implications for the history of the human race. As fate would have it, NASA's Mars Odyssey, named for the spacecraft in Arthur C. Clarke's breathtaking film 2001, is now racing toward the red planet. When the Odyssey finally sends pictures back to Earth sometime this coming year, NASA will have taken the next giant step in preparing the public for some very exciting news indeed. Clark believes that, quote, large life, unquote, namely vegetation, perhaps even trees, may be present in some of the Mars Global Surveyor photographs that Tom Van Flandern will be showing you in just a few minutes. This is a sculpture by artist John Sheldon of a famous five-sided pyramid photographed by NASA's Viking probe in the Cydonia region of Mars. But as the late Carl Sagan pointed out in his television series Cosmos, the Elysium area also has pyramids. And these pyramids, very seldom spoken about, are said to be twice as tall as the World Trade Center. How could that be, twice as tall as the World Trade Center? Geologists insist that the wind would have to be blowing from three directions, at all at the same speed, for the pyramids of Elysium to have been formed naturally. And then there are the glass-like tunnels, which are at least 60 feet in diameter, with exposed sections running 1,000 feet long. The tunnels are amazing. We may be looking at nothing less than the ultimate proof of an ancient civilization that used these tunnels for water or perhaps even for transportation. Before I turn the microphone over to Brian O'Leary, I have something I want to show you over to your left. on Mars is back. This sculpture was made by artist Salvador Rizzillo and based on the original Viking photograph of the face on Mars. It shows a giant sphinx-like figure with human features in Cydonia. And now a new photograph has been released that's really going to make you sit up and take notice. It's an entirely new face on Mars, and this time it appears to be the face of a woman wearing a crown. Okay, and now I would like to introduce Dr. Brian O'Leary. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I normally don't read statements, but I think I'm going to start reading this one. Science is going through a major revolution. There's no question about it. We are living in exciting times in spite of what government agencies might tell you. Uh, more than, um, and probably in no area has there been more misunderstanding than in the area of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Whenever anybody embarks on this search, there seems to be great controversy, great misunderstanding. And yet, more than two decades of responsible research by investigators outside of NASA uh, on this object, the so-called face on Mars, have revealed very strong evidence, not yet proof, that 
this object and other objects nearby were artificially constructed. And yet NASA and its contractors have shown no interest in these objects and have obfuscated the research. History is full of examples of denial and suppression of new ideas by the establishment. We have Galileo, Copernicus, Bruno, the Wright brothers, and so forth. In each case, the conventional wisdom was reversed by the investigations of courageous outside researchers who have risked their careers and sometimes their lives to seek the truth rather than to be politically correct. My colleague, Dr. Tom Van Flandern, is one example. I have known Dr. Van Flandern for nearly 40 years and can attest to the thoroughness and integrity of his uh, research. During the 1960s, we were graduate students together at Georgetown University. Tom went on for his PhD at Yale. I went on for my PhD at the University of California in Berkeley. Then I was appointed by NASA to be the first astronaut to Mars. Unfortunately, the Mars program was canceled at that point. Tom and I each pursued mainstream careers in astronomy research, publishing dozens and dozens of peer-reviewed papers in our fields until the 1980s when we independently began to address promising but unsupported topics such as the Mars anomalies. In 1976, the Mars Viking Orbiter imaged a mile-long mesa that resembles a, a human face staring straight up into space. The spacecraft also imaged other objects of interest in the surrounding areas. This began a 25 long period of scientifically inappropriate actions, including the initial de denial of a second corroborating image of the Cydonia face. The use of improper optical algorithms and filters on the high resolution face image for, uh, for example, the initial Mars Global Surveyor photograph. Holding back or delaying the release of images from the public and providing premature negative interpretations of their possible artificiality. Also, we have seen in NASA a lack of cooperation with qualified outside investigators, including campaigns to discredit the inquiry. The refusal by mainstream scientific journals to even